They are nature's most violent storms, born from supercell thunderstorms. They generate winds strong enough to lift people, cars, and even houses. They cause deaths and devastate residential areas in seconds, and we're talking about tornadoes. Hello and welcome back. A tornado is a violently rotating column of air that extends from the sky to the ground. Tornadoes come in many shapes and sizes, but often have a funnel shape with a spout, the flared part attached to the base of a cloud, while debris and dust swirl underneath. On average, a tornado has wind speeds of less than 180 kilometers per hour. They are usually about 80 meters wide and can travel several kilometers before breaking up. In extreme cases, tornadoes can be kilometers wide and sweep for hundreds of kilometers. A multiple vortex tornado called the El Reno Tornado swept through the city of the same name in Oklahoma, USA in 2013. As it crossed US Route 81, it reached a record width of 4.2 kilometers, beating the previous record of the 4-kilometer Hallam tornado set in 2004. Mobile weather radar measured extremely strong winds of up to 486 kilometers per hour within the vortex. This is one of the highest wind speeds ever recorded on Earth, just slightly lower than the wind speed of the 1999 Bridge Creek Moor tornado, which exceeded 500 kilometers per hour. And this is also the strongest wind speed that humans have ever measured. With winds faster than the world's fastest helicopters, the V-22 Osprey, the Bridge Creek Moor tornado was rated F5. This is the highest rating on the Fujita scale, a scale for rating tornado intensity based primarily on wind speed as well as the extent of damage it causes. The longest lasting tornado in history occurred nearly 100 years ago, the Tri-State Tornado of 1925. As the name suggests, the three-state tornado swept through three states of the United States, including Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana, traveling a total distance of 378 kilometers in a single day. Even more frighteningly, this super tornado was just one part of what is called one of the deadliest tornado outbreaks in modern history. In total, at least 12 major tornadoes ravaged much of the central, western, and southern United States, killing at least 751 people and injuring more than 2,298. Tornadoes often appear on warm and humid days. When hot air rises and hits cooler air above, moisture condenses into clouds. On a large scale, this process will create clouds and even thunderstorms. But for a tornado, one more secret ingredient is needed, wind shear, sudden and extreme changes in wind speed and direction with altitude. For example, on the ground, air moves at a certain speed or direction, but right above us, it's at a completely different speed and direction. It creates a horizontal rotation in the middle. When the horizontal rotation meets the rising hot air, it gradually tilts and eventually rotates vertically. At the same time, it will draw in more warm air from the thunderstorm and increase the rotation speed. Inside the air mass, Moist air condenses into a funnel-shaped cloud that grows from the base of a thundercloud. And when this funnel touches the ground, it becomes a tornado. The lifespan of a tornado usually ranges from a few seconds to a few hours. Tornadoes are most often described, especially in movies, as giant vacuum cleaners sucking up everything in their path. Actually, that's not quite true. If you have to compare a tornado to any household appliance, it should be a blender, but without the blades. The biggest threat from a tornado is debris, with winds exceeding 160 km per hour and can reach for 100 km per hour. Tornadoes can easily rip off roofs, even tear apart flimsy houses, billboards, or uproot trees. Then the tornado picks up the debris and throws it at a speed comparable to an F1 car on the racetrack, turning them into stray bullets flying blades that injure or even kill anyone who happens to be in its path. Only this is a real thing. Because they are attached to the base of a thundercloud, tornadoes can also be accompanied by extreme weather events such as thunderstorms, lightning, and even hail or floods. 
In the old days, when scientists were just beginning to study the nature of tornadoes, they realized that the pressure at the center of a tornado is lower than the outside, creating a suction force like when you use a straw to drink water. It is true that tornadoes can suck objects from the ground into the air, but it is not at all like a straw or a vacuum cleaner. Straws or vacuum cleaners work because they are airtight. If the straw has holes in it, you won't be able to suck, or suck much. But it's difficult a vacuum cleaner is the same. Secondly, even if you assume that the tornado is airtight like a straw, although the tornado is not airtight at all because it is made of air and water vapor, the maximum limit that it can suck you up is only more than 10 meters. Why? Because 10.3 meters is the theoretical limit that you can suck water with a vertical straw when you stand at sea level, no matter how strong your mouth is. Straws work based on pressure difference. When you put the straw in your mouth and suck, you create a low pressure area. At this time, the atmospheric pressure with a value of one atmosphere presses down on the water, pushing the water into the straw up to your mouth. The harder you suck, the greater the pressure difference, the stronger the suction. Atmospheric pressure at sea level is one atmosphere, and the lowest pressure in the universe of absolute vacuum is only zero atmosphere. Thus, the largest pressure difference can only be one atmosphere. That is assuming that your mouth actually creates an absolute vacuum. But the problem is that the mass of a 10.3 meter high column of water are also exactly equal to one atmosphere causing the weight of the water column to balance with the pressure difference and it will not rise any further. In short, straws and vacuum cleaners work mainly based on pressure difference, and this method can only suck objects up to a very limited height. Meanwhile, the suction effect of a tornado is mainly based on wind speed. Imagine the wind as a flow. In a tornado, the air currents move extremely fast, like a raging torrent of water, carrying everything in the flow, from people, vehicles, trees, roofs, and anything it can throw into the air and out of the tornado with enormous centrifugal force. In this way, tornadoes can suck objects up hundreds, even thousands of meters. Visually, it looks no different from a giant natural vacuum cleaner. However, the nature is different. An EF3 tornado on the Fujita scale with a maximum wind speed of about 260 for kilometers per hour sustained for 3 seconds, can lift a car weighing about to tons off the ground, while an EF5 tornado the size of the Bridge Creek Moor tornado can lift an entire house into the air. In case you don't believe it, an EF4 tornado that occurred on May 31, 1935, in Nebraska lifted a house off its foundation and moved it with the frame intact into the middle of the road about 26 meters from its original location. And if you notice, from the beginning of the video until now, all the examples of tornadoes have one address in common, the United States. It's not because we're favoring the United States, but in reality, the United States possesses geographical features that inadvertently make it a breeding ground for tornadoes. One of them is the Great Plains, a flat land covered by grasslands and steppes located in the Rocky Mountains. Here, dry and cold air moving south from Canada encounters a mass of moist and warm air moving north from the Gulf of Mexico, colliding with each other and generating tornadoes. In addition, suitable geographical areas for tornado formation are also colored orange in the map you are seeing. But tornadoes are not unique to land. Under the right conditions, tornadoes can form at sea, usually within about 100 kilometers from the coast. Water spouts are often much thinner and weaker than tornadoes on land, but they can capsize ships and small fishing boats. Another hotter type of tornado is the fire tornado. Although it looks 90% like a tornado except for the fiery red core, a fire tornado is not actually like a normal tornado at least in the way they form. If standard tornadoes sprout from supercell thunderstorms, fire tornadoes are created from wildfires colliding with chaotic winds and wrapping around each other to form hot, deadly spirals. Really deadly. Please don't make clips like this guy. Have you ever encountered a tornado? Please share your experience below in the comments section. As always, remember to subscribe and ring the bell.